Hi everyone, today we're talking about the soul of money, um, transferring your relationship with money and life by Lene Twist. I hope I'm pronouncing her first name right. I got this book in one of those uh, boxes that looks like a, a birdhouse mansion, whatever you want to call it, the little library things that are on corners of streets and everything. Uh, if you know what those are called, please comment and let me know. Um, I ran out of books to read in my I ran out of books to read in my house and so I took one of my old ones that I don't want to keep and I exchanged it in one of those libraries uh, for this it sounded the title sounded interesting to me and I just wanted something to read for the next week until I had a chance to go out and buy new books we're gonna start off with some objectives and an elevator pitch of the book and then we'll go into my personal opinion later With the elevator, The Soul of Money has an interesting title and premise. The goal of the bo book is to change your relationship with money. She uses stories and life lessons as being one of the people that is trying to end world hunger through the Ho World Hunger Project. She gets into a little bit of how she came upon her wealth and then got into giving generously in donations and then also giving her time generously to help the World Hunger Project. The book is filled with many stories and life lessons the author has found throughout her journey. There are general tips given of how to change your relationship with money and how to see what money is in a different way. These are applicable to really anybody. You could say this is more for people in a higher socioeconomic status, but also she kind of dives into a scarcity model that a lot of people have around money. And I think anybody could benefit from getting away from that scarcity mindset. And with that being said, let's get into a little bit about the book. I hope that interests you. She gives a website with a free gift that you can go and check out. I didn't go and check it out, but I assume it'll still be there. And whether this book is fiction or nonfiction, this is definitely a nonfiction book. And if you were to ask if this was more of a scientific or anecdotal perspective on things, I would say that this is more anecdotal than scientific because she pulls from a few research studies, but not a whole, that is not what makes up the, her entire argument is scientific studies. The book is about 299 pages, 257 of those pages are the actual meat of the book, and there are 12 chapters in it. Objective qualities about it features a new introduction, and it is also forwarded by Jack Canfield, the author of Chicken Soup for the Soul. And the reading level isn't crazy high in this, it's about an average adult reading level. Um, and it's easy to pick up and put down with a lot of easy sectioning and stuff like that. So if you want to just read for a couple pages and then put it down, it's broken up really nicely so that you can do that. And that's one of the things I really liked is sometimes I just pick it up and read three pages and then other times I'd read a whole chapter if I had enough time for it. So it can really um, be read at your own pace. And that it ends the objective portion around this book. And now into my subjective opinion of what I liked about it and what I didn't after reading it. I am more of a research project kind of reader, so I'm not much of a non, so I'm not much of a fiction book reader. I don't like to go out and watch, read Aragon or Harry Potter. I like to read more scientific or research-based or self-help type material. And this would possibly file under the self-help area, but, um, for me personally, I don't think I would recommend this to many of my friends. I have pretty high standards though for what it takes to recommend it to most people, but overall, unless I had a friend or person I knew that was really struggling with the relationship with money, this does actually kind of di dive into some of that, to some of the mindset that people get around money. And like I said earlier, a scarcity mindset. So if you had a friend that is suffering from that I would say I would possibly recommend this reading to them other than that I don't think I would recommend this to most people I picked this up at my local library box so luckily it was free I think I'll probably put it back into another library box or gift it to a friend or just give it to somebody for me personally the more stories I read that were not so much surrounding the author and more 
other people that she witnessed. I found a lot of interest in those. She actually has been into some interesting situations that I enjoyed reading about. And overall, I was more interested in the people that the author met more than what the author necessarily had to say around certain topics, unless it was on broad stroke issues like sufficiency and scarcity. And the lessons and tips that the author made were interesting, but not groundbreaking, in my opinion, from my, from my personal experience. But for me personally, I don't think I have the same mindset when it comes to money that the average American might have. And with that, I, the lessons didn't quite strike me as it might with somebody else. The story centered around poverty in other countries was very interesting to me as well and eye-opening in some cases. If you're interested in learning more about poverty in other areas of the world, I definitely recommend this book for that just on that alone. There were stories about other wealthier people and other more poor people or soci lower socioeconomic people and those are what I found was very interesting because it gave me more of a perspective on somebody else's life. And so she's met with very well off fortunate people and has detailed what their lives generally speaking is like and also, and she has also detailed what people in a lower socioeconomic status and what they have to do on a daily basis to live. She details it on both sides of the spectrum, which I thought was a very interesting and I haven't read many books on such topics so I enjoyed listening and generally I like to buy my own books and that's partly because I like to underline in them and that's usually underlining research studies or statistics given or anything like that. and again this book wasn't very um, research based which is definitely okay but that meant I wasn't really underlining as much as I really do and for me I kind of gauge how much I'm extracting from a book by how much I underline and annotate because those are notes that in the future I want to look back on and read over and see. And for me personally, in my own experience, the lack of underlining shows that there was not a lot of mounting information that really interested me that I would want to come back to and underline. It makes it sound like this book is not good and I don't want that to be the takeaway for this. I think this is a very well written book and has a lot of interesting stories and a really interesting perspective on things, especially from somebody that was in the World Hunger Project. But for me and for some other people, it's not their cup of tea. And for other people, this would be a very good read if you want to get more information out of what poverty is like in other countries or critique some of your associations with money in your own personal life. And so for people with those intentions, I would direct you to this book and it doesn't just cover relationships with money it's more in general a relationship with resources and so if that's also applicable to you then i would recommend it a few p points that i found interesting without giving away anything that would spoil the story i found a lot of information from the Mother Teresa story she has in the book. I thought that that was very interesting. The parts of the book comparing money to energy in the sense of like life force or values, I thought was very interesting as well. Stories about um, how people's lives are, whether they're more in a rich and financial standpoint at the lower totem pole of the socioeconomic status. I thought those stories were very interesting and eye-opening as well. And also the allocation versus accumulation method where it is not what you accumulate but how you allocate your resources. I very much like that idea and philosophy that she put forth in the book as well. For me personally, I don't want to make this review a negative one. I think this is a very good book and I would recommend it to certain people but not all of my friends. After revisiting my notes and rereading some portions of the book, I would give this a solid 7 out of 10 with 5 being the average. I picked this book up by chance and I don't regret reading it. But I don't think it would be a book I'd want to keep around and read again or even read my underlines again. Maybe a couple of the stories I'd revisit, but overall, I don't think I have a need to revisit this book. And so with the very specific, if you can find this at your local library and just you just want to read it here and there or right before bed for a couple passages, I think this book's really good for that. If you want to gain more insight on poverty or people's relationships with money or just want some 
interesting stories for somebody that was within the hunger project i definitely think this is a good book for people that are looking for that and with that all said i hope that this gives you some more insight on the book again i don't want to trash this book i think it's i think it's a well-written book but for me personally it didn't quite strike it like it might for some other people and that's okay some books aren't for everybody but I do want to say thank you to Lene Twist. I hope you're, I'm getting your name right. If I'm not, I'm terribly sorry. And thank you for taking your time to write this book. Thank you for everything you're doing in The Hunger Project. And thank you for putting your experiences and what you found into words so that this can be preserved for anybody that wants to go back and look back on the information. I know I didn't give this book the highest praise, but I still appreciate somebody going out and writing about their own experience and then publishing that for anybody to see. I'm happy that she was able to get her voice out there and I ha I'm happy that this book was published. I feel like it can give some value to other people that are more under this demographic of what the book was going for. For me, I didn't quite feel it. And with that being said, please comment a book you want me to read and also review. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching if you stuck through this whole video and I'll catch you on the next review.